I'm Shane and welcome back to Relative Time. We're going to cover a few topics in this video, but the main reason is to announce the winners of the Richie Strap giveaway. But before we do that, I want to show you a few photos I was sent by Team Han, who won the Bertucci DX3. And that black DX3 looks fantastic on that Bon NATO, so thank you for sending these to me. Unfortunately, he also emailed me to let me know that his son has now stolen that Bertucci, so he may not be wearing it anytime soon. So good luck with that. But let's move on to the winners of the Richie strap giveaway. Now if you missed it, I was given these eight straps by Richie to review and then give away. So I'll be picking three winners and dividing the eight straps among them. So not to drag this out too much, but the first place winner is Yonthra1, who will get first pick. Second is Adam. And third is Ye Maliv, who will get whatever is left. If I haven't already, I'll be contacting you and giving you my email, and we'll get this all sorted out. Now, I didn't want to make a video where I just announced the winners. I wanted to include it with something else. The trick was, what do I include it with? Now, my San Martin review is not quite ready yet. That should be early next week. So I was thinking about maybe doing an unboxing. Unfortunately, the watch I wanted to do the unboxing of got delayed and won't be here till this weekend, but I thought I'd briefly show you what it is. It's another quartz titanium field watch, similar to the Boulder Venture and similar to the Bertucci AT2. It's called the Hummingbird by a company called Techni Instruments, but to be honest, I don't really know much about them beyond that. I've actually been looking at this watch for a while, but was kind of hesitant because I thought the price was a little high. But last week I noticed it was on sale, so I pulled the trigger. There are two things I think that make this watch really interesting and different from the Boulder Venture and the Bertucci. The first is the case, which is a thin 9mm titanium, but it comes in four different color versions of anodized titanium. And the second is the movement, which is a Seiko VH31 movement, which is actually a sweeping quartz movement with four beats per second. It's actually similar to this Navaforce I also picked up, although here it's a Seiko VH61 movement, which is more of a multifunction. Now as you can see, it's not quite as smooth as an auto, but it's still a little more interesting than a regular quartz. And I've been wanting to see some of these watches, and I'm glad I've actually found a few companies that are using them. As for the Navaforce, I'm not really sure if or when I'll get around to reviewing it. But I'll put a link down below, and let me just say this. It's a really cool movement in a cheap $20 watch, with an actually surprisingly good strap. So use your own judgment with that. So as I was saying, I was looking for other ideas to include with this video, and without that watch to unbox, I was kind of running short. Until this Blue Alpinist happened. So since everyone else seems to be talking about it, I thought I might as well jump in on the bandwagon. Although in my case, my opinion might be a little different than most other people's, as everyone else seems to be really excited and really interested in this. And to be honest, I'm a little annoyed and a little disappointed in the announcement. So I'll try to make this quick. So in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me back up a bit. A few days ago, a new limited edition Alpinist was announced. And in the span of 45 minutes, it was not only announced, introduced at a price of $600, and quickly sold out. And I believe there's only about 1,959 of these being made or have been made. And I think that represents the year 1959, where the Alpinist was originally introduced. First, let's talk about why I'm annoyed. And to be honest, a little bit of it is jealousy. Now, I always wanted to get a Saab 017, but waited too long until they were discontinued. And here, in all likelihood, I'll never see one in person. It was an extremely limited run although I'm sure a few hundred of them are going to pop up on eBay for about a grand. My big problem has more to do with the limited edition part. Now, I have no problem with companies making limited and special editions. That's just part of the industry, and Seiko's been doing this a lot, particularly lately. It's just in those other cases, the base model that the special edition was based on is still available. And here, the Saab 017 was discontinued almost exactly a year ago, so you can't get it anymore. So obviously, Seiko knows there's still a demand, otherwise they wouldn't have made a limited edition. And obviously, they still have the production capability, otherwise they wouldn't have made that limited edition. Yet here we are a year later, and there's still no replacement. 
So I just find the whole thing a little annoying, maybe a little frustrating. And in some ways it feels almost more like a big middle finger to those of us that never got one. The second thing is disappointment, and it's more of a disappointment in the new design of the limited edition. Now when I think Alpinist, I think of the Saab 017, which I know wasn't the first Alpinist, but to me it's the watch that helped solidify its cult status. And what made that watch so special is that it really held a unique place in the market. It seemed to hit all the right boxes to make it a cult hit. Its beautiful green and gold color scheme made it a field watch that seemed more like a dress watch than say a tool watch. Combined with its internal compass bezel, it really gave it a very unique look. Not to mention that it had a great price, where you could usually find it for around $350, which was incredibly good when you noticed that it came with Seiko's 6R15 movement. While this new version has a good look, I think it's missing the spirit of what made the 017 so great. And in that regard, I think it completely misses the mark. In fact, looking at the two side by side, I think the new one looks almost a bit too blue. I think it needs something more. I'm not really sure. Like maybe they should have kept the internal bezel a different color like on the 017. But what I do know is that it definitely looks more rugged, more tool-like than the 017, which in some ways reminds me more of the Boulder Expedition which I always thought of as being inspired by the 017. But whatever it is, I think it just misses the mark and misses what makes the 017 so special. Anyway, that's just my opinion on it. And if you happen to be one of the lucky souls who is able to order one, I'm sure you'll love it, and I'm sure it'll wind up being a great investment. I just hope it means that Seiko is planning to make a new one sometime soon. In the meantime, let me know in the comments what you think about this Blue Alpinist, or if you'd like to see an unboxing of that Hummingbird. And as always, you know what to do with the rest of the buttons down below. Thanks for joining me.